And, and I was just, uh, Ryan, I don't know if you heard this and I don't even know if you can hear when you're backstage before I was able to get you on here. So I apologize. And, uh, thank you so much for waiting, but, yeah, yeah. um, you know, I, I was letting people know that you were coming on here in a few minutes. And I said, man, if, if I think of anybody who, uh, from a media slash fan standpoint, that's right about college football, it's Ryan Winter. Now, this guy's just a, a fun loving guy. He loves his team. He's passionate. Sure. He wants them to win. He hates when they lose, but sure. when they do, he gives credit to the opponent, says great game. Hey, they're and he points to different programs and, and things that are going on around the sport and especially in the Pac-12 to say, hey, Jonathan Smith's doing a good job. I love to see what they're doing over here and over there. And, I'm, and uh, you know, th th that true spirit of you can love your team and fully support and just hate when they lose and you can still be balanced about it and, and, and be civil and act like a human. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, and and I think I think social media. Thank you so much for those great kind words, Mark. I really appreciate. It. I think I think it's just social media, and I think I think our our culture in general. I think you know, like those guys who are all worked up in in, in that game. That's fine, get worked up, but I don't think it needs to be personal. I'm I like I said, I didn't choose the Oregon Ducks. My actually go back in time. My great my grandparents met at the Washington Husky game after World War II. So like my <laughs> grandfather's coming off the war in the uniform. My grandmother's up there with sorority sisters. They met at this exact game, Washington at Oregon in 1945. So my family dates way back. We're part of this uh, community, but I also have a lot of love that I'm willing to give. You know, I, I, I still think USC is, is, can be and, and has been the best program out here on the West Coast. And people are thinking, okay, well, let's just trash on the Trojans now. And I say, no, 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 you understand. I mean, I grew up again, this, that's, that's a place of respect. You, you respect that. So when Oregon, when I took my son down there, you know, here I am going around. I said, this is the Olympics. The two Olympics were held there. I mean, come on, you know, you got to have respect for some of those places like the Coliseum and other people just kind of, oh, whatever, you know. And then with this rivalry, it's real. I mean, this Washington Oregon rivalry cuts very deep. There's multiple layers to it. And then this week didn't help anything with uh, Jimmy Lake's comments beginning of the week of academically prowess. That was the key phrase all over the place. There was a lot of disrespect going back and forth, thinking, you know, uh, and I, I'm willing to be like, hey, I know University of Washington is a better school than Oregon academically. University of Washington is an amazing school. It's in a major metropolitan city. It's downtown. It's right on the lake. I mean, you don't get many campuses like this. I think there's only three campuses where the football field can be accessed by water in the in the country. Neyland Stadium is one of them uh, in Tennessee. And I think there's only I think it, it's uh, uh, Lake Washington. I think there's one other one. I can't really remember. Baylor. Baylor, right. And, and that, those are very special places because of that. There's there, there's a cool thing to that. And then you add to it that it's in a major metropolitan city. I mean, Seattle is twice the size of Portland. Why wouldn't I respect Seattle? I mean, it's so I think there's so much to be said there. Like, you know, I said, I grew up with sportsmanship. I grew up playing on both sides of the ball. I played sports my whole life. I was the captain of every team I played on all the way through high school. I shook the other team's hand. I talked to the rest. Then I became a coach and I've coached all through different youth sports, high school sports. I'm an educator. So I, I kind of promote this idea of it's OK uh, to knock the other team down just as long as you pick them back up, you know, have a little respect for uh, both sides of the ball. And I, te I tend to think that's all I thing that all these coaches all these fans have to say is that's a good team over there that's a really good team over there and it gives them more credibility trying to play this game like we're not recruiting uh rivals or we're not it, it, that stuff all it does is just amp things up just give a little credit say that team's good and then if you beat them doesn't it make you look better <laughs> i mean why wouldn't you <laughs> No, we like to tell everyone that they're trash and they're garbage. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a dumpster yeah. fire and they're yeah. hot garbage. Yeah. Right. The other thing I've seen, I, I played basketball the whole life, coached basketball the whole time. I, I go to Blazer games here. I hear people saying to the other team, you suck. I heard these guys, you know, sell, say that Carmelo Anthony is with the Knicks. Carmelo, you suck. And I was like, this guy's a Hall of Fa future Hall of Famer, one of the best <laughs> scorers of all time. Check that. Then he comes to the Blazers last year. That same guy who's yelling, you sucks, like, I love you, Carmelo. I mean, come on. Yeah. Now. You know, and so I just think there should be a little more civility in it. Uh, and 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 I do think that college football has a different angle than the, and the NFL because uh, there is family connections to it. There is regional connections to it that run very deep. Um, and, and that sort of thing, uh, you have to be defensive about that a little bit. And Washington does stuff like they put little rubber duckies in the urinals and that's, they do that every year. I mean, there's just little stuff like that. That's just kind of cute, whatever rivalry stuff, but then there's like 
full-blown Husky fans thinking they're going to go to this game and get in a fight with a Duck fan. Like, that's ridiculous. That's, that is not, there's no room for that in our, in our sport, especially with families around and everything else. And I'm a high school educator. These college kids were just in high school. I always tell these kids, these guys were at the prom two years ago. These guys were just two, two, two years ago at the prom. You know, these guys are not 30 year old grown men. They're young still. And so you got to give them respect as well. Uh, yelling stuff, booing in the crowd because you want the other play. I mean, leave that for the pros. Yeah, I think we've elevated. Um, so, so there's a give and take, there's a benefit, but there's also a, a downside to it in regards to elevating these athletes to this prominent position where they've always received the red carpet type treatment uh, up through high school and now into the college ranks. And, and uh, you know, we've made it way too important. But then on the flip side, we've also given them way too much responsibility. You know, sure. they, they sure. basically have a job. Yeah. is is what they have they they're they're not playing sports in addition to receiving an education they have a job and their job is to be a football player to be a linebacker or a tackle or whatever so right. it's um oh yeah i mean and i think we i don't think people lose that as well they, they lose this idea that one these kids are are, are are students and they're trying to be students they're young they're young men they're going out they're doing things they're hanging out with people or having friends, whatever else the case may be. And they've got a literally full-time job being, <laughs> being a college athlete, you know, that takes a lot uh, uh, of investment there. So, you know, you got to give these kids respect. And I, I do like going on the road because it feels like only the hardcore fans are up there. You get to be with the flock. We go up there. You get to be a little closer to the team. They get to feel that energy. And that's really, I feel like what the best thing we can do as fans is, is give back and continue to give back and continue to give as much as we can uh, put on our effort on our side of the thing to make it uh, live and loud in the stadium. I mean, by the second half, the duck fans were much louder than the Husky fans already. I mean that fast. So uh, it, it's a fun environment to go on the road you got to give these uh, fans respect. And you also got to feel a little bit bad for the other side, a little bit, you know, you walk out of there and they're like, these guys are just downtrodden. They think they don't know where their coach is going. They don't know what the future of their program is. Whereas Oregon, we're looking at this sitting pretty, man. We keep Cristobal going. Yeah, we're not blowing teams out like we didn't ship Kelly, but at least now we can hang with Ohio State when you play on physical in the trenches. It just happened this year. You know, you go play Georgia next year to open the season. It's not like you're going to get blown out. You know, you're going to be in it, at least in, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know if you're going to win, but again, that's the same conversation we have the Ohio State thing. Didn't know if we could win. All of a sudden you go out to Ohio State in the horseshoe and you win a game that nobody expected it. So I do think Cristobal has changed the mentality out here. Uh, you know, this, the perfect example, the strength and conditioning staff, they don't even have coats on. They're just in the polos on the side, just getting completely torrential downpour, you know, mustache, you know, Aaron Feld, the guy with the mustache, just dripping off the mustache. I mean, these guys don't care. And they stay amped. They stay pumped up. And uh, that's a different environment than what they had with Chip Kelly and Mark Helfrich, where everybody had the coats on. 